Okay, you're going to go ahead and refute two heresies by the Jesuit Catholic Council of Trent, the Satanic Pagan Catholic Church and their Satanic Jesuit Order wrote the Council of Trent condemning certain heresies, some of which are heresies, but others are biblical doctrines. I'm going to go ahead and refute some of the heresies that this Council of Trent espouses. And my cat is getting on the desk. Boa! No, Boa. Oh. Okay, Boa, can you move? Thank you. There we go. So anyway, Catholic Council of Trent, written by Jesuits, all kinds of heresy, works salvation, all the way through. So I'm going to go ahead and refute the first heresy. The Council of Trent, Catholic Jesuit Council of Trent, teaches the satanic heresy of conditional security and denies the biblical doctrine of eternal security. This is the sixth session, canon number 23. If anyone say that a man once justified can sin no more nor lose grace, and that therefore he that falls and sins was never truly justified, or on the other hand, that he is able to during his whole life to avoid all sins, even those that are venial except by a special by a special special privilege from God, as the church hold in regard of the blessed virgin, let him be anathema. So they're condemning one of the things is the heresies. They're condemning sinless perfection, which Amen. A sinless perfection is a heresy. Nobody can be sinless. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7.20, There is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So obviously nobody can be sinless. So they're right to condemn it. But they, look how they also condemn conditional, or they also condemn eternal security. And teach conditional security. They say that basically they're condemning people who say you can't lose grace. But you can't. Grace is not earned by our works. You can see 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. We're not, we don't earn grace by our works. But they're saying basically you have to earn grace by your works if you sin, if you have to basically stop sinning to earn grace. But what does the scripture say about this? Well, the Bible teaches that when Jesus Christ saves us, we'll never perish, and we won't be lost. John chapter 5 and verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John chapter 10, verses 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So Jesus says, we will not come into condemnation and will never perish. John chapter 6, verse 39. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. So if, when we get saved by Jesus Christ, we will not be lost. This is also repeated in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. We're kept by the power of God. That's what the passage says. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. We're kept by the power of God. We won't be lost. It's that simple. The Bible also teaches... In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 to 22, Ephesians 1, 13, and Ephesians 4, 30, that were sealed by God and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and sealed until the day of redemption. You can't lose your salvation. It's that simple. When Jesus Christ saves you, he saves you. Okay? You're not saving yourself by your holiness or your own works. That's work salvation. That's Catholicism, as we see in the Catholic Council of Trent. Your works have nothing to do with your salvation. It's not by your own works of righteousness. Titus, 3, Titus chapter 3, verse 5 talks about that. But the Catholic Church, and some of the street preachers too, believe basically you're saved by your own holiness and your own works. It's heresy. Next heresy, second heresy, taught by the Jesuit Catholic Council of Trent, is that basically baptism is part of your salvation, and baptism is necessary to be saved. Basically, you don't get washed in the blood only, you also have to get washed in the tub of water. Satanic heresy. This is the seventh session, canon number two, on baptism. If anyone say that the true and natural water is not of necessity for baptism, and on that account rests in some sort of metaphor of uh, those words of our, Lord Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ, unless a man be born of water and of the Holy Ghost, let it be anathema. So what they're saying basically is that let it be anathema if you're saying that baptism is not part of your salvation. Because you're born again of water and of the Holy Ghost. And again, dispensational context too. This was before the gospel was fully revealed. So it's non-dispensational heresy when you don't rightly divide the word truth. But what does the Bible say about baptism and when baptism happens? The Bible is clear that baptism happens after somebody gets saved. There's an example 
where baptism happens after somebody gets saved, not before. But they're saying basically that that basically baptism is what is it? Not just a metaphor, but it's actually basically literal, essentially. It's literal, basically being born again, literal salvation. Which the Bible teaches that it's basically like it's symbolizing you being dead and then raising up. You know, I'm not going to go into that too much, but. The Bible says that baptism happens after someone gets saved. Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is the water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So what did it happen? Before or after? He believed and then he got baptized. You know, he didn't get baptized before his salvation. It's not part of your salvation. And to back this up, the Philippian jailer, when he asked what must I do to be saved, baptism was not mentioned. He was, he was never told, get baptized. Let's see what he was told. Acts chapter 16, verses 29 to 31. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy, thy house. Notice how he didn't say believe and get baptized and do the sacraments. And No, he just said believe. You know, he came in a repentant state and he believed. That's what he was told. He was not told to get baptized. So was Paul preaching a false gospel? Well, according to the Satanic Jesuit order and the Catholics, I guess he was. So those are just two heresies taught by the heretical Jesuit Catholic Council of Trent. The Roman Catholic Church is not Bible-believing Christianity. It is a pagan uh, cult. They, what they do is that they basically mix in pagan Roman religion, pagan Greek religion, in with biblical Christianity to, to get this, this impure, uh, corrupted, basically twisting of Christianity. Of Christianity. After they get the Roman Catholic Church, that's why a lot of what they do is more similar to a Greek and Roman paganism than it is to Bible-believing Christianity. You know, you know, the title of Pope comes from Pontifex Maximus, the Emperor of Rome. But he just gave himself the title of Pope. You see what happened is that when the Roman Empire as a political system fell, it re-emerged. It never really went away, it just re-emerged as the Roman, you know, Roman, Roman Catholic Church. That's where it re-emerged. It re-emerged from political empire to a religious one, the Roman Catholic Church. So it went from being the pagan Roman Empire to now being the pagan Roman Catholic Church. That's what it comes down to. You can read about that in the two Babylons. You can read about that um, from Alexander Hislop, or not Alexander Hislop, uh, Alberto, Alberto Rivera. He's an ex-Jesuit priest. Comes out, he came out and exposed the Jesuit order. And, you know, that's it. The Roman Catholic Church is a mixture of pagan, Greek, and Roman religion in with biblical Christianity to get this impure form. That's what happened. Roman Catholicism is satanic, it is heretical, and it is not Bible-believing Christianity. And they teach all kinds of heresies in their dogmas and doctrine. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.